In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. So today is the first Sunday of Lent. It's the first Sunday in our spiritual journey. And this Sunday is called Treasure Sunday. Because today we read the gospel taken from St. Matthew, chapter 6. And the theme about this passage is treasure. And that's what I want to speak about today, treasure. The treasure, we all have treasures. And even from the time we're born, if you even if you look at an infant, even infants, they find attachment to certain things and they start to value certain things. So if you try to take a toy from an infant, what does the infant do? He starts to cry and be sad. So we all start to form attachments to earthly things, even from a young age. And this is just part of our human nature. And unfortunately, this part doesn't change as we mature. You know, as we're a child, we maybe crave a toy. But as we mature, we crave other treasures. We tra crave money, we, tra we crave position, we crave other things. So this is just part of the human nature that we have to deal with. Another troubling aspect of human nature is not only do we you know, crave things, but our craving doesn't finish. There's no limit to our craving. You know, it's like someone, you know, you have a good job, but you don't want just to be at that job. You want what? You want the next job. You have a good house, but you don't want your house. You want the house across the street that's a little bit bigger. You want, you have enough clothes, but maybe you see someone else who's dressed more nicely and you want their clothes. You want a newer car. You want a bigger house. There's many things that we crave and we're not satisfied. I mean, luckily, even like food, we always want to eat more food. And then luckily our brain tells us, oh, it's too painful to eat more. I suffer through this a lot. But our brain tells us it's too much. So even we're always trying to get more, 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 more. And I think that's why the Ten Commandments, one of the Ten Commandments that was iterated in the, in the Pauline epistle today, if you guys paid attention, was what? It was, do not covet, right? Do not covet. Be satisfied with what you have. Because the first lesson about treasure, the first lesson about treasure is that it is relative or it's perceived. Treasure is relative. Someone's treasure to you is different to someone else's treasure. Um, and perhaps this is why in the passage of today, if you pay attention, you know, the first block of the gospel was about treasure. Then the second part it was about what? It was about eyes. And then the next part was about what? Treasure again. So what does the eyes have to do with, you know, treasure and treasure? The idea is that our eyes deceive us because our eyes are what sees the treasure. And there, that is what causes us to covet what other people want. You know, I remember as a child and we watch cartoons. You guys remember cartoons? For some reason, whenever the cartoons, they show money. Do you guys know what picture they show with money? It always is glowing. No one remembers this? Like, it's gold. The gold is always shining and it's sparkling. And when you see it, it's attractive. I think this is because the, the lust of the eyes. The eyes see the shining and it wants to be attracted to it. So our eyes cause us to perceive earthly treasures as necessary. So we have to train our eyes not to focus on, on other people's riches. And I think this is why also St. Paul, when he spoke to the Corinthians, what did he tell them? He told them, don't look at others. He said, you are already full. You are already rich. You are already rich. And yeah, you're already rich. It means that everyone has blessings, right? Everyone has, should be grateful, should be thankful for their, what they have. You know, don't think of yourself as poor when you have enough of life's necessities. You know, don't look with your corrupt eyes at the riches of others. That's because the first lesson of treasures is that it is perceived. They're relative. The second th lesson we learn about riches or treasure today is that it is what? It is temporary right? Earthly treasure is not permanent. Everything passes away. You know, I have a friend who was recently arrested. Recently arrested. Very good position, very good possession, very good everything. And arrested, and then I was just thinking about it. In an instant, all his riches are gone. He doesn't have a house anymore. His car, he can't make, he's, he's in prison now. Riches gone instantly. Your riches, you can't keep them. They're temporary. 
You might say to yourself, I'm a righteous person. I'm not going to go to jail. My riches are safe. My riches are safe. Then I would say, look at the story of Job, right? Here was a man who was the most righteous. And then 30 seconds, one servant comes and says, oh, the oxen were dead. The next second, oh, your camels are dead. Oh, the next second, your kids are dead. Oh, the next second, your servants are dead. Every, like, bad news after bad news after bad news. Treasures are not, they're temporary. They are not eternal. You might say, okay, Job lived in a bad area. There was criminals around. My money is in a bank, and no one can go and steal my money. Then I would say, you know, in Luke 12, there's a story of a rich man who... You know, he, was, he had a harvest, and he was thinking about where he's going to keep all his riches. And then what happened to him? The Lord said to him, Fool, tonight your life is required of you. Okay? And then, so what, what did he do with his riches? What did he do? Nothing. They all passed away. So even if your riches are eternal, let's assume that, worst case, your riches are safe. <laughs> then the other part is that you're not safe. <laughs> you're, you're passing. So your riches could be eternal, but you are passing. So you'll pass away and you'll leave everything. I think that's actually what King Solomon, you know, King Solomon is, and we talk about King Solomon in the passage of today. He said in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, he says, Yes, I was great, greater than anyone else who had ever lived in Jerusalem. My wisdom never failed me. Anything I wanted, I got. I did not deny myself any pleasure. I was proud of everything I worked for. And all this was my reward. Then I thought about everything that I had done, everything that I worked for, and I realized it didn't mean a thing. It was like chasing the wind. It was of no use at all. Later he says, Nothing I worked for and earned meant a thing to me because I knew I had to leave it to my successor. And he says, I don't know who my successor is going to be. He's going to be wicked. He's going to be good. So all the things that he, he got, he called them vanity. He said, vanity of vanity. Okay? Because everything in this earth passes away. I was reading a, a good story um, in Saint, by St. Saint John Chrysostom. He said this world is like a play. We're all in a play right now. Picture ourselves, we're all in a play. And we have, in this play, we all have masks. So my mask is I'm a chemical engineer. And I work in this area and I do this. And, and then he said at the end of time... Everyone, everyone has to take off their mask because everything here is temporary. And so he said, like, he was talking about the rich man and comparing him to Lazarus. He said the rich man in the story of the rich man and Lazarus, you guys know the story? He said the rich man at the end of time when he had to go and present himself in the judgment, he had to take off the mask of his riches. So all of us here, we are in a play. So don't be, don't be, your riches here are are temporary. You will soon have to take off your mask. The third point that follows from this is that if, if riches are temporary, then it makes no sense to be attached to them. Why would you be attached to something that is passing away? Being attached to earthly treasure is being like bound to a weight and carrying a weight behind you. And we are on a journey uphill to meet God, and this weight is carrying us down. So imagine you're like a bird trying to fly, and this weight is keeping you from flying. And I think this is why every liturgy, why, what do we read? Every liturgy says, Do not love the world, neither the things which are in the world. The world is passing away and all its desires, but he who does the will of God shall abide forever. And that's why today we read from St. James, right? We read what about desire. Do not let your desires keep you attached to this world. Because this world, we are supposed to fly in this world. We are like birds. We are supposed to fly. And our attachment to the worldly possessions is what keeps us bound. We have to cut these, this attachment. And if that's why the Bible is full of stories of people who are too attached to this world. That's what the whole Bi the Bible is telling us. Fly, 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 fly. But everybody, we learn from the examples of everybody who is bound. Can you guys think of some people who are bound to this world because of their riches in the Bible? Who? Most famous is Judas, right? Judas' attachment for worldly possession, his love for money, kept him bound to the world. Who else? I thought of uh, many examples. How about the rich man who spoke with Jesus? 
right? What did the rich man? He said, go and sell yourself. He said, no, just, I can't do this. Okay, I'm going to leave. What about uh, Ananias and Sapphira, or Sapphira, right? They lied about their money, and then what happened to them? They died. What happened to their money? Hmm. What about uh, in Luke chapter 9, there's stories about people who wanted to go and become disciples of Christ. You remember these people, they wanted to go and become disciples of Christ. So they came to Christ and said, we want to be your disciples. And then what did he say? He said, uh, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Uh, we never heard of these disciples anymore. Rah, and they left, right? And then another one said, okay, I want to follow you, but I have to go bury my family. Then what happened? We didn't hear from him any either. No one knows what happened to him, okay? So if you are bound by earthly treasures, unfortunately, this is a big, big mistake, okay? Big, big mistake. We can learn from the lesson of the martyrs that just shed their blood for Christ, right? These were people who did not have any attachment to the world. They forgot about all their attachment to the world, right? These were people who went to Libya. Why? For, for money, right? They went to Libya for money. But when their circumstances went a certain way, did they forsake their faith because of their family, because of their money, because of their children, because of... No, these were people who had cut the attachment from the earthly possessions and they were able to shed their blood for Christ. And this is what we can do if we cut ourselves from the attachment of worldly treasures. One of the measures of by which we can see if we are attached to this world is by what? How do we measure if we are attached to this world? How? The answer is by how much we worry, by how much we worry. If we worry too much about our treasure, or if we, our mind is focused only on our treasure, then our mind is going to be focused only on how do I protect my treasure, how do I build my treasure, how to... And that's why in this chapter, our Lord Jesus Christ speaks so much about what? About worrying. He says, do not worry, do not worry. Because, and I have to confess, I'm the biggest worrier here in, the, in this group. I worry about everything. I worry about, you know, I w the, the moment I wake up, I'm worried, 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 worried. So I, this is something I struggle with too. But it, what it's clear from this chapter today is that worrying stems from a lack of faith. It's very clear today that the, the gospel says that worrying stems from a lack of faith. Because worrying is a concern for the future, which we don't have any control over. You don't have any control. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So there's no sense in being anxious for something that is outside your hands. If we truly believe that we are sons of God, if we truly believe we are sons of God, and we know that God knows best, and he will do the best for me, then we don't need to worry. So we have to have faith in God to provide for us. And that's why in the story today it says, he provides for the birds of the air, he provides for the lilies of the field, so will he not provide for us? Because all of this requires faith. All of this requires faith. That's why he says, but seek first, if your treasure is on God, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added to you. Allow God to be your prized tre treasure. Let him be your first priority. Because he is limitless in his love and his mercy, and he is everlasting. And he has prepared even the best place, not just a little house for us. He's prepared the most beautiful place for us in heaven. So during this time of Lent, we want to train our eyes, right? We want to train our eyes not to be deceived by perceived glory of earthly treasures. Don't be fooled by the shining gold that was in the cartoons or don't be, um, don't be deceived by the riches of others. Don't cover, covet the items or riches of others because remember that earthly treasure is temporary. Earthly, tre earthly treasure is temporary just like we are temporary. Our physical bodies are temporary. Everything in this world is passing away. So let us attach ourselves. Instead of being attached to the earth, we want to be attached to our Heavenly Father who promises to provide for our earthly needs without any need or anguish. And glory be to God forever. Amen.